Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Steve Graham. I'm the fire chief here. And on behalf of the men and women of the Boiling Springs Fire District, I want to welcome you to today's commemoration of the events of September 11, 2001. I also want to thank you. Thank you for remembering. We made a solemn vow all those years ago to never forget. And thank you for choosing to never forget. Please join us as we remember all of those who gave their lives that day and continue to uh, suffer the effects of the uh, debris from that day. Please join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day and the freedom to gather together as we remember Lord, the events of September 11, 2001. We ask that you continue to comfort all the families affected by this tragedy. We pray for our nation and our leaders. Lord, that you would guide us in wisdom and peace. Bless each one that is here today and bless our time together. Protect all our responders and their families. And let us be your hands and feet to help those in need. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. On this day in 2001, at 8.46, Flight 11 crashes into the north face of the North Tower. At 9.02, Flight 175 crashes into the South Tower of the World Trade Center. At 9.37, Flight 77 crashes into the western side of the Pentagon and starts a violent fire. At 9.45, the United Airspace is shut down. At 9.59, the South Tower of the World Trade Center collapses 56 minutes after the impact of Flight 175. At 10.03, Flight 93 is crashed by its hijackers as a result of the fighting in the cockpit some 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh in Somerset County 
Pennsylvania. Later reports indicate that the passengers had learned about the World Trade Center and Pentagon crashes and were resisting the hijackers. The 9-11 Commission believed that Flight 93's target was either the United States Capitol building or the White House in Washington, D.C. And at 928, the North Tower of the World Trade Center collapses one hour and 42 minutes after the impact of Flight 11. We have record of 2,977 victims on the September 11th attacks. 412 were emergency workers from New York City and of these, 343 were firefighters. Since that day, we know that the lingering effects of this attack has claimed even more lives, and we must continue to promote mental and emotional health awareness, as well as disease, cancer, and other associated health risks. We must never cease in our thankfulness of all those who came together on that day. One of the greatest displays of brotherhood, kindness, selflessness, and generosity that my generation has seen. Let us take a moment to remember the heroes that charged on scene fearlessly to protect, to preserve, and to rescue those in need. Let us remember the families who lost loved ones that day, and remember our nation and the countless lives that were lost as they fought and continue to fight for peace, freedom, and to bring our enemies to justice. We made a promise to never forget, and I'd like to challenge you with the question today, how will you remember? Not just remember that something happened, and not just remember on the 11th of September, but what happened and why? And what can we do to keep the spirit of patriotism and the love for humanity alive? What action can we take to help out our fellow man? Even the smallest of tasks, such as a phone call or a text, to let someone know they're thought of. Checking on your neighbor or stopping to help someone in need can have a big impact. Jesus said in Mark 10, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be a servant of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. Greatness comes when we put others first. And as we remember 9-11 and the attacks of that day, we remember love and sacrifice. While the pain of loss, sorrow, and grief will never be erased, we can continue to heal while honoring all those that lost their lives. We can remember how they put our families, our friends, and co-workers, and even our property first as they selflessly responded. What better way to remember than by loving and caring for the survivors of those families, the citizens, and all responders. Let this be a great day as we look to serve those around us, and as we look to serve, we ourselves will be served by those who look to fulfill this same greatness. Let us be encouraged today that as, as we look back on tragedy, we look ahead to love, friendship, to memories, and to peace. I would like to close with a passage from Philippians 4. It says, Let your kindness be known to all men. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer, let it be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Would you bow your heads for a moment of silence?
I invite you to join me again in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this time to do what we're doing today. And we are so grateful for all these people who see the importance of this day to never forget, to keep our promise, to always remember and to pray for those who continue today to suffer and to struggle. We know that families and friends and loved ones, those who serve together with those who died on that day, they, they have a struggle year round, but this day especially, it just brings back everything and makes it all fresh, raw once again. So we continue to pray for blessing and for healing in hearts. God, we are thankful for the song the bagpiper just reminded us of, of your amazing grace, how sweet the sound. We are thankful that your grace is more than enough to see us through every struggle of life. And I pray that we'll continue to walk in your grace and to trust in your grace now and forevermore. So, Father, thank you for this time to remember. May, as the chaplain said, this not be just a once-a-year thing, but may we continue to walk in that same spirit of remembering those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. And so, Father, as this ceremony comes to an end this morning, we want to close this service in the words of the firefighter's prayer. It says, When I am called to duty, God, wherever flames may rage, give me the strength to save some life, whatever be its age. Help me embrace a little child before it is too late or save an older person from the horror of that fate. Enable me to be alert and to hear the weakest shout, and quickly and efficiently to put the fire out. I want to fill my calling, Lord, and give the best in me, to guard my every neighbor and protect their property. And if, according to your will, my life should come to end, please bless with your protecting hand my family, and my friends. Amen. Thank you for attending this morning. Uh, please stay and join us for food and refreshments inside the firehouse. And thank you again for choosing to remember. Thank you.